We know the revolution in communications data is moving at an incredible rate. By the year 2025, if Moore's law holds true, that is, computer power continues to double every 18 months, as it does today, actually, there are some now who say it's down to 11 months, but even if it was every 18 months, by the year 2025, we would have computer chips 10,000 times more powerful than the ones we are using today. And there's already more power in your mobile phone than there was on the Apollo 11. There's more power in your Dell desktop at home than there was in the land base in Houston, Texas, that sent men to the moon and back. Are you with me this morning? We are moving incredibly quickly in the area of technology. In 2030, according to the head of the British Computer Society, we should be able to store the video equivalent of an entire lifetime of human memories on a device no bigger than a sugar cube. This is not science fiction, ladies and gentlemen. This is being worked on today in some of the major technological houses of Europe and the United States. The IBM Blue Brain Project in Switzerland expects to have developed a human-level machine intelligence by the year 2020. We're talking now about the cloud. Many of you are already using the cloud. How many of you use something like Gmail? Gmail is just an easy expression of the cloud. You don't carry around your data and your software on a heavy computer. It's all online in this interconnected node of built on top of the existing World Wide Web. And this node provided by companies like Amazon, working with Google, working with Yahoo, is where all of your data and all of your software is held. You only need a little light netbook to carry around with you, and very soon they will be so light you'll be able to fit them uh, in your pocket. We know that the cloud is becoming a platform for what we call the Internet of Things, which is where there are billions, not millions, but billions of, of tiny sensors, RFIDs, radio frequency ID tags. We use them all the time in the Oyster cards in London. We use them now in some parts of Europe in supermarkets where you wave and pay. If you come to the London Olympics, you will be waving and paying everywhere on the Olympic site. No need to use a credit card. You wave your card and the ex money's extracted from your account. Inside the plastic is something as big as a grain of sand, a radio frequency ID tag. You only have the plastic because it's impossible to hold a grain of sand. In that grain of sand, there is a transmitter, a receiver, data storage, and power supply. You could store all of your health details, all of them, dentistry, everything, in that grain of sand. And as that continues, we're going to find these sensors placed in everything from your sprinkler system at home to your air conditioning units um, to your clothing. And all of them hooked up to the internet to provide certain services. Maybe your body temperature is getting a little bit much, needs to come down. Your clothing will automatically respond. Again, this is not science fiction, ladies and gentlemen. This is reality today. It's just not yet uh, consumer viable. It's leading to what we call the exaflood. An exabyte, most of us know what a megabyte is. Most of us know what a mega megabyte is. A gigabyte, we've sort of got our head around now. But an exabyte is one million times one million times one million bytes. One million, million, million keystrokes is an exabyte. In the year 2006, it's been estimated that there were generated by the global community 161 of these exabytes. But today, in 2010, by the end of this year, it will be around 988 of these exabytes, nine times as much in just three or four years. That's the speed at which the technology of the net is growing. 